To the administrator, should I say long time no see or nice to meet you? Greetings everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at one of the strongest modifiers in Ether Gazer, Grey Ibis Thoth. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. We release a complete guide for every new character making their debut on the global server. So if you would like to see more videos like this, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. We can all agree Ether Gazer is a fairly underrated game. Liking videos like this one will help creators reach more potential admins and grow our community. Thank you. Thoth is a physical DPS unit. She belongs to the Nile faction of characters and uses energy as the resource to execute her skills. In battle, Thoth operates under two states, her base form and her enhance form. While in her base form, she passively gains five energy every second. Casting skill one or skill two will generate one of two marks depending on which skill was used, and casting the fifth sequence of her basic attack will change skill one and skill two into their variant forms, even if the base skill is currently on cooldown, and will in turn grant a mark on cast. When her energy meter is full, holding down the attack input will allow her to enter her enhanced string manipulation form. Her basic attack have five sequences, and will change skill 1 and 2 into their variant forms each time the fifth sequence is cast. Her dodge skill has multiple functions. By default, using the dodge skill will not interrupt your basic attack sequence, and this effect can be triggered indefinitely as long as an attack is performed immediately after dodging. When her dodge meter is full, performing a successful dodge will change skill 1 and 2 into their variant forms. While in string manipulation state, skill 1 and 2 are changed into their enhanced form after a successful dodge. Lastly, while her dodge meter is full, performing an attack within 3 seconds after evading an incoming attack will allow her to instantly teleport behind the locked-on target and retaliate with a barrage of daggers. Enemies hit by this attack are inflicted with a 50% movement speed reduction for 1.5 seconds. Skill 1, Dance on Edge will grant her a Feather Blade mark on cast, and deploy several threaded blades at the locked-on target. After performing the fifth sequence of her basic attack, the cooldown of skill 1 and 2 are reset, and this skill is changed into its variant form. In addition, both the base and variant form of this skill is capable of negating an incoming attack during their casting animation, and grants her 15 energy. Skill 2, Silver Drop will grant a silver thread mark on cast and bombard the locked on target with several threaded blades. In addition, enemies hit by this attack have their movement speed reduced by 75% for two seconds. After performing the fifth sequence of her basic attack, this skill is changed into its variant form, allowing her to teleport to her target with great speed, group up enemies hit and relentlessly attack them. Skill three, the stitch, has four variations and can only be activated while in possession of any two marks or while in her string manipulation state. Variant 1, Engraved Rhythm Blade, requires two feathered blade marks and allows her to quickly deploy several homing blades at the locked on target. This ability have a very quick cast time, can be used at range and has one of the highest damage multipliers in her kit, making it the go-to skill for most situation. Variant 2, Engraved Rhythm Silk requires two silver thread marks and will trigger an AOE explosion of threads at the locked on target's location. In addition, all enemies hit will have their movement speed reduced by 25% for three seconds. Variant 3, Engraved Rhythm Stitch, can be casted when a feathered blade and a silver thread mark are available and will deploy a series of threaded blades from above, ensnaring every enemy's caught in its path reducing their movement speed by 75% for 3 seconds. While your energy is full, holding down the attack input will consume all available marks, deal damage to the surrounding foes, and allow her to enter her string manipulation state, resetting her skill's cooldowns. In this state, skill 3 is replaced with its fourth variant, Prison Net, allowing her to weave a pyramid-shaped net around the locked-on target, completely immobilizing them for 3.5 seconds as her threaded blades descends upon them. While in string manipulation state, 
Thoth will lose one energy every 0.1 second. Attack power is increased by 5%. And for every 100 points above the energy cap, attack power is increased by an additional 0.5%. Up to a 20% attack boost can be obtained from this and will last until the string manipulation state ends. String manipulation state ends when her energy reaches zero. During string manipulation state, casting these skills will no longer grant the corresponding marks. Instead, skill one and two are replaced with their variant forms. After performing the fifth sequence of her basic attack, skill one will immediately change into its enhanced form, ignoring its previous two feathered mark requirement. Likewise, after performing the fifth sequence of her basic attack, Skill 2 will immediately change into its enhanced form, ignoring its previous two silver thread mark requirement. Her ultimate, Phantom Blades Vice, assaults the surrounding foes with several threaded blades, dealing massive physical damage. In addition, increases self-independent damage by 20% for 25 seconds, and increases the entire team's all attribute damage by 15% for 15 seconds. While in a team with the Lioness Sekhmet, their ultimate skill chain, Broken Thread of Destiny, recovers HP and grants the potential Unleashed buff increasing physical damage by 25% and a 20% skill damage boost to the entire team for 12 seconds. In addition, the team's all attribute damage is increased by 15% for 15 seconds. When the user or a teammate lands a critical hit, they gain 3% ultimate charge. This effect can trigger once every two seconds at most. Thoth is a fairly easy modifier to play. In fact, her gameplay loop is very similar to Jimming, in the sense that you are mixing and matching a set of marks from skill one and two to trigger alternate abilities with skill three. Her possible combinations are one, one, three, two, two, three, or one, two, three. Resource management is not an issue since she gains it passively and suffers no negative penalties for being agile in battle thanks to her skill cast and dodge not interfering with her basic attack sequence. Hopefully by now, we have a better understanding of her kit. Here are the combos I like to use when playing Thoth. Keep in mind, a Thoth using the Gen Zone functor will plays a little different than one using the Signature functor. The free-to-play one will be much slower, and the other is a complete skill spamming bot. Begin the encounter by casting skill one, followed by two, three, then basic. Hold down basic to enter her enhance form and use three, one, full rotation of basics. One, full rotation of basic. One, one, two, three, and basic. The rotation ends when she exits the enhanced state. Fairly simple, right? Now get your notepad. Like I mentioned before, a Thoth with her signature functor is a skill spamming bot, so her rotation is a little longer. Begin the encounter with one, one, three, basic. Two, one, three, basic. Full rotation of your basic attack. One. Then activate string manipulation. From here, cast three, one, one, two, two. Full rotation of her basics. One, 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 two, two, three. The rotation ends when she exits her enhanced form. As you guys can see, the amount of nonsense she can just throw out are insane while using her signature functor. So definitely try and grab it from the event shop if you can reach that milestone. Prioritize upgrading skill 3, then skill 1, followed by skill 2, basic attack and ultimate. When it comes to ether codes, 3 red is recommended for DPS. The first line will allow her to trigger the blade barrage from her dodge skill each time a basic attack is used, after skill 1 was cast to negate an incoming attack, and increase its damage by 10%. Every time you cast the blade barrage, you'll gain a stack of silken fate with each stack, increasing crit damage by 4.5% and enemy armor penetration by 3%, stacking up to 7 times. 
When entering her string manipulation state, she will gain all seven stacks and will not lose stacks when taking damage. Lastly, when consuming marks to cast one of skill 3's variants, using a basic attack within three seconds after casting the skill, with also cast your dodge skills, Blade Barrage ability. And while in possession of all seven stacks of Silken Fate, her independent damage is increased by 50%. Yellow Code has a lower damage output than Red, but is extremely useful for dealing with mobs. It will increase normal attack damage by 20%. When not in the string manipulation state, each normal attack or skill hit restores one point of energy. Reduce energy drained in string manipulation state and increase attack power by 20%. Lastly, each time an enemy is defeated, she recover 20 energy. I know this doesn't sound too impressive on paper, but yellow code will allow you to remain in your string manipulation state indefinitely. Well, as long as there are enemies to defeat, that is. If you have her functor, you can ignore yellow, but those running the gen zone functor should definitely switch to yellow for story-based content, where you are often tasked with dealing with multiple waves of enemies. Blue code turns her into a support, but who exactly would she be supporting in the current sandbox? For functors, the free-to-play, Pharaoh Yuzakaf doesn't do much for her at all, since the amount of energy being expended by her is just way too low. Its base stats are better than the four-star options, so for free-to-play, it is still your best option. Her signature functor, Pharaoh Nefakata, will automatically restore one energy point every 0.5 seconds. After exiting the string manipulation state, she will recover 24 energy. It will increase her independent damage by 10%, and the base damage of skill 1, 2, and 3 by 8%. When not in the string manipulation state, casting skill 1 or skill 2's base forms will instantly change them into their variant forms. While in string manipulation, state casting skill 1 or skill 2 will immediately change them into their skill 3 variant, ignoring the previous 2 mark requirement. Needless to say, her signature functor makes her extremely broken. The biggest issue with free-to-play Thoth is her options in functors and how dependent she is on the fifth sequence of her basic attack. Nefakata allows her to bypass this basic attack requirement, letting her spam skill variants back-to-back -back with almost no downtime. <laughs> Guidance of the New Moon is ideal for slots 1, 3, and 5. It increases physical damage by 9% and grants 3 stacks of New Moon upon taking the field. Each time you gain combat resources, you gain an additional stack of New Moon, stacking up to 30 times. For each stack of New Moon you possess, skill damage increases by 0.3% on hit. When a combat resource is consumed, you lose one stack of New Moon, and for each stack lost, crit damage increases by 3%. For slots 2, 4, and 6, Ruler of the Heavens is optimal. It increases ranged damage by 10%, skill damage by 5%, and basic attack damage by 15%. For enchantments, prioritize attack, crit rate, crit damage, skill damage, and bonus physical damage. Warps gives you the freedom to personalize your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. For slots 1 and 2, we want two power up ranged, one judge and one executioner. For 3 and 4, we want two telepathize force field ones and two EM flux. While in a party with her skill chain partner, you can replace the telepathize force fields with two unfetters for short fights. In longer engagement, the force field will be much more beneficial. For five and six, we want two armor breakers and two evolution particle three. When it comes to team comps, Thoth and the Lioness are a match made in heaven. Here is the setup for my Sekhmet, and we have a full guide on the channel if you need more info on her.
characters like Hera, Lingguang, or Okuni can occupy the third slot. You can also play her as a standalone on a Marduk team, and new players can run her with Kotachi and Buzembo. In closing, Grey Ibis Thoth is a powerful modifier with a fun, beginner-friendly kit and incredible damage output. Whether you're a new player just starting out or a veteran looking to shake up the meta, this little lady is one you won't want to miss. <laughs> よく